Hey, what's going on here? <laughs> How's it going, everybody? This is Daniel. And I'm so happy to be here tonight with the 7 and 7 for February 2022. And we are doing Easter stuff now. Isn't that fun? Spring and Easter. So we're going to do a hippity hoppity card. That's actually the name of the stamp set that we're using tonight. Hippity hoppity to all. And we're going to uh, color it in with some Copic markers. I don't know why I'm rubbing my hands like this. I feel like, you know, when you get excited, you start to rub your hands. <laughs> anyway, we're going to play with those... Uh, Easterish, Easterish, very much Easter themed products. And uh, so if you have them already, get them out. If you don't have them yet, why don't, why don't you take a moment and order them because you need them in your life, right? <laughs> and some sequins. Look at this. these sequins. It's Peter Cottontail, I think is the name of the sequin set, sequin mix. Let me just open that up real quick and let you see what all is in there. Look at the goodies in there. We've got little tulip heads and Easter eggs and candy sprinkles. Little, um, what are those called? Peeps, it looks like. Little peeps in there. Lots of fun and iridescent sequins. Great for shaker. So we're going to do a full front shaker card. And let me get that die out over here. So um, Nicole has these full front shaker dies in the shop. And what they do is you can run some acetate under this in your die cutting machine. And it will cut out a... Uh, perfect window panel to go right over your A2 size card front. Now I've already done that. Can't really see it very well in here. Let me see if I can get some light to hit that. There we go. And what it does is it scores. Wow. It's actually, let's get a piece of white paper under here. <laughs> there we go. It scores that line there for you and cuts it, uh, cuts the ends at an angle. Now, let me just clarify something about the width of this die. This die is uh, a little wide for my Spellbinders Platinum and my Sizzix Big Shot. So I have both of those. But it's not too wide for my Gemini regular size. So if you want to, if you need it to go all the way through on the, in the die cutter, then use your big Gemini machine but I used the uh, Spellbinders Platinum 6 to die cut mine and I just trimmed the edge off with scissors because it doesn't really matter to me it doesn't anyway I just trimmed off the sides here with scissors to go along the side there because this side doesn't really matter if it cuts or not you can just fold that in anyway but it's up to you. If you have a big machine, you go for it. If you have the platinum, you just have to make a little bit of an adjustment for that. Bonnie, that's a Picket Fence Studios die as well. Picket Fence. Let's get going on our card project. I'm going to start by doing a very simple background. Very simple, actually. And I'm just going to take a life-changing blender brush and some do, -Si -Do ink and a sheet of, or a panel of, um, this is an expressive card. You could use whatever card you want. I like how smooth this card stock is. It's, and so it'll uh, take ink blending really nicely. I have a freshly inked up pad of do -Si do And I cleaned my brush. Let's make sure, let's see if it is clean enough. I love the peachy pink of this do -Si do It's not exactly pink but it's not exactly peach either, and it's not coral. I don't know what to call it. It's do -si do that's what it is. <laughs> now I wanna kinda get it nice and heavy up here at the top, and then we will blend it down.
blend it down all the way. Look at that. I get it nice and thick up there. Isn't that a pretty color? Hi, Karen. Hello, everybody. I see lots of you are joining in. Hi, Kathy is here. Sharon, Carol, Barb, Sandy, McIver. She's a superstar. Keely, Dawn, Brandy, Xiomara. Wow. So glad you guys are all here tonight. Welcome. Now, as this uh, gets applied on here, it will dry back a little bit. And as I get further down my panel, I just want to use a lighter hand and just uh, create this kind of gradient all the way down. And you have to be a little patient with it as well. If you're impatient with this, you're going to have a splotchy result. So try to be patient as you go down. And if you get splotchy, if you get a splotchy result, don't beat yourself up over it. Just spray some water on it because they're water reactive to, you know. <laughs> they're water reactive and so the uh, water will add some nice splotches on there for you. Plus, if you don't want it too smooth, you could make it look like a cloudy sky, you know, like there's some clouds in there. We are making a, a pink sky, which is kind of odd, right? But it doesn't matter. You can make it whatever color you want. All right. Now, I don't have to go too far down the panel because we're going to cover up this bottom section with our die cut and our Copic coloring and our bunny ears. Isn't that fun? Nicole, this is Express It. Express It's designed for Copics, all right? I'm sure you know that, but just so everyone else knows, it's for Copics. But this really does, it blends nicely. I like how it blends. And those things, uh, the ink dries back a little bit. I'm also working on my um, glass mat from Glassboard Studio that uh, actually Nicole sent me. So very sweet of her to get one of those for me, the black one. I have the white one now too because Glassboard sent that one to me directly. Just recently, like the week before, Nicole got me the other one. <laughs> So here we have our panel. I'm not going to spray it down because I want it just like that. But if you wanted to spritz it, you could get some nice watermarks on there if you like. Okay. Now let's go uh, color in. Let's do the bunny first because it's easier. Um, the other one is a little more intricate. So, <laughs> yes, this is a fancy mat. It's really really fancy. I feel like I've got a Cadillac mat on my desk now. All right, so for this, I'm going to use for his the inside of his ears, I'm going to use an R81. Let's see if I can get that to focus. There we go, R81. There it is. Rose pink. I'm just going to color the inside of his ears real quick. Like that. See how easy that was? Just a swipe. Now I stamped these out before the show and die cut them out so you guys don't have to watch me do that. But I want that to be just a little bit richer in there. So let's get an R43 and just come in a little bit darker. Just a smidge along the inside of his ear right here. I chose this cardstock because we are going to be doing some ink blending on it with our Copics. So there we go. Pink bunnies are the best. <laughs> They are wonderful. Okay, now I'm going to get out my W's, the grays. These, this is W5. And I'm only going to add this right underneath, 
kind of in the crevices of our bunny. Just where there are creases. <laughs> and there we go. And then I'm going to get a W3. Super easy coloring, too. This is easy to do. Just doing some flicking here. Go up the ear a little bit. And then a W1 to finish it all out. Hopefully this is not dry. Nope, it's not. You may not even be able to see that W1, but I can see it. And there on his little flap of hair. <laughs> he is the hottest bunny rabbit. Look at him. So handsome. Check him out. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to put him over here. And then now we've got Easter eggs. Now this is the funnest part to color. I mean, that's fun too, of course, but we're going to get some wild and crazy with our colors now. So put your seat belts on. <laughs> put your seat belts on. Let's do some darker colors near the bottom. Under here, we're going to do some less saturated colors like uh, RV69. It has a little more gray in it and what that does is it gives the appearance of depth. So, right Yvonne? He's so good looking. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna come in under here and just color in my Easter egg with the RV69 right at the base of this egg. This one right here. And you can kind of make your own rules up with with this egg. You know, you can color it however you like. It's just like when you go to dye Easter eggs. It just reminded me of the fun I used to have. And you could make, um, make your eggs whatever color you wanted. I used orange, pinks, and uh, yellows for mine. So, and here I'm going to come in and do the same thing down here. There's some really tight spaces in there with the design, so we're going to just uh, not worry about coloring that in too specifically. Right? Just add that in there. Now that just makes it look darker under the grass, right? He's a bunny chick magnet. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Now, uh, for the next line, I'm going to use an R YR07 for the next level. Here. This reminds me of the eye we colored last time. About the same, kind of the same set of markers. Not all of them, but some of them. Now the egg is opening up a little bit behind the grass, or the grass is opening up a little bit so we can see... A little more of our egg. And then, let's see. There are these little stripes going this way here, so we're going to just leave that part kind of empty there. And then we'll do the same over here. We can do the same order even though they're totally different orientations. Super easy. Now, if you're doing this and you're, it's giving you a headache, you're not enjoying it, you're doing it wrong. You know what, just, it should be relaxing and fun to do. If it's not, start over. Take a deep breath and just relax. Enjoy the ride. I'm just laying down 
these colors. Now as I come up, I'm going to get lighter and lighter with my color choices. Just as the sun is going to hit this little Easter egg. Right. Have you guys been having fun so far with the 7 and 7? There we go. Oh, man. Aren't they cute? Bonnie's been organizing. Okay, now we're going to go... Um, let's see. I'm looking at my original design here. Let's do... I've changed this up just a little bit from my original design, but... Let's do R43 next on our line here. We're lightening things up just a little bit. The others are higher numbers, like 07s and 09s. And now we're coming down to a 3, R43. And I can add some depth on these in just a minute, but I just want to kind of get the sketch down of where we're going. I think my R43 needs to be refilled. Look at that. Yeah, something was going on with it. I don't know what that is. I got something out there. So if you get some Copic leakage anywhere, I just keep a little mister with alcohol in it and I can spray it down like that and clean that right up since it moves with alcohol. Kind of like me, I get to move in a little more. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's kind of the opposite. If I have a glass of wine or something, it makes me sleepy. <laughs> Okay, enough of that. Let's do Y. No, we're doing orange now. Let's do YRO2. Since we're getting lighter on the top. YRO2. Now I'm waiting to do the green to the end because I don't want to accidentally pick up some of the green with my other markers and pull it onto my eggs. You know what I'm saying? There we go. And then we can go back to yellow, yellow next. Let's do Y13. And then our last one is gonna be an R, let's do R81 here at the very top. Okay, but now we need to figure out how to darken this the edges up to add some dimension, right? Well, I guess we should do... These have dyes, Kelly. So there's the dye for the bunny ears, and here's the dye for the grass and eggs. I cut them out before we went live. Okay. Now for this egg, the center one, we're doing yellow and uh, red violet. So let's do Y17, Y13, and then we'll do the, the spots in the RV. Like this. Now 
There we go. And then the lighter one is Y7. I'm sorry, Y13. Just kind of blend that down. Like that. There we go. Now I just want to add the, the darkness on the sides there. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to grab just a little bit um, of uh, darker colors on each of these. So this is Y17. I'm just going to add that right on the edges there. Right down this way. Right. Y17 on the yellow. And then on the orange, I'll do YR07. Just a little bit, just to add that feel of depth. It's not over depthy, but <laughs> is that even a word? It's not over depthy. RV17. And then let's do R43 just to kind of blend those together a little bit. Right there. And YR02 to blend this together. Then R81 to do this one, just a little bit. And that just adds a little bit of depth to that, you know what I'm saying? We'll do the same thing over here. So do YR07. I'm not going to mess with the one under the grass much. But and then um, for the yellow, we'll do Y17. For, let's do, um, we could do this. We could do a little bit of the orange on this yellow piece too, and let's blend it out with the, uh, Y17. Like that. And then some red. We'll do R. I have RV or R43 for this. There we go. That just looks a little bit deeper. You know what I'm saying? Huh. What are y'all talking about? Different color choices for different people. Pink and purple and mint and green? Nah. I don't want those colors. I like this one. Those those should go on your card, Bonbon. Bon. <laughs> Those should go on your card. Anyway, so now I'm just filling in the dots on my Easter egg there. And I see that I've got a little spot here that I didn't color in that needs to be yellow. You know what I'm saying? Now for the green, I'm not going to go crazy with a bunch of blending, right? I'm not going to do it. I am just going to flick up from the bottom and then maybe add a little bit of lighter green near the tips of these. It's okay if you get out of the lines on these. Don't murder yourself trying to 
be super specific with them. <laughs> okay, let's see. Come up here. That was YG09, and then I'm going to do a G14 for the tips here. Just the feel is what you want, the feel of the color, even if it goes outside of the lines. No one's going to be picking at you for it. In fact, I like the idea of just filling in all of it with a uh, lighter green even. So let's do that. This is G02. So I'm putting that in kind of behind all of it. It'll give it the look of a continuation of the field, the grass. And I like the way that that will look against the, the pink sky. That mint green will look beautiful. Okay. Now, we need to put some gold on here. So I'm going to just get a gold gel pen and fill in that stripe there on my egg. Very warm, fun color or accent on my egg. Not quite Fabergé, right? But, you know, I wouldn't blame you for thinking that these could be close, you know? <laughs> if you want, you can do what I'm doing here. Just add some stripes of gold if you want. I think it's fun. You may even just add some on our polka dots. We'll have polka dots on polka dots. Now let's see that in the light. Isn't that fun? I think it's fun. Nice little accent. <laughs> Bonnie loves to get a get up uh, get my goat so but she never gets it because I love her and I don't mind her I miss some of my green strands there and I'm coloring and coloring them in yellow okay Look at that. Isn't that fun? Well, we're almost done. So here we have our die cut right on top there. Our handsome bunny peeking on peeking in over the grass. And I've already heat embossed. A sentiment here it says happy Easter so let's pop things up I'm just gonna adhere this with some glue let's see some glue that I know is not stuck or I hope is not stuck <laughs> I'm just going to add a little bit of glue here to the bottom of his face. And pop that in right 
there. I want as much of him showing as possible without seeing the bottom of that die cut. And then I'm going to add some foam tape, of course. I'm not going to put it all the way to the outside because we're going to have to trim some of that off. So let's do this. Let's. Did I put that too far over? I hope not. Put that right there. Almost to the edge here. We'll cut off the very edge, the very end. All right. And this one right here. You know what, I think I I need to just trim the edge or not. I'll just tear that off. <laughs> eee. No one will see the back of this anyway, right? No one. So then you just peel these up. Where would I be if I didn't have me some foam tape? Okay, we'll just pop that up right. I'm too far down. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. What do you guys think? Isn't that fun? I'm just going to grab my YG down here and fill in the little bit of white that I see down there that's bugging me. And then I'm going to take my Tim Holtz trimmer, pop that in there like that. Slice that off there. Slice that off there. Now let's add our acetate panel that we die cut or I die cut off camera with that die. So I'm just going to take this, let's make sure I've got that going this way, right? This is the right way. I'm going to, I like to, this is how I like to do it. I like to take my panel and add the acetate over the front of it and adhere all of those down and then pop this up on top of a card base. That way there is no, uh, you don't see any of the plastic anywhere on the outside of your, uh, outside of the very front. You only see the plastic in the front. So you're not going to be able to see the edge of my plastic very well, my acetate very well, but I can. So I'm just going to lay some score tape down here. This is so easy. Right. And another trick is don't make this too tight. You don't want to make it too tight. If you make it too tight, your card front is just going to bend and warp. So just let it be... You know, just a little bit loose. Just let it hang loose a little bit. You don't want it too tight. Let's see, I think I may need to pull that just a little bit to the right. There we go. And we'll do the same thing on this side. And the last one we're going to put on, actually, let's do, let's put a sentiment on here, guys. Don't you think that that's important? The sentiment needs to be on there. There we go. 
Yes, I'll definitely show you the die. Absolutely. Let me pop that down there. Get it straight. Okay. Here's the die that uh, I used to die cut out that panel. I was sharing with them earlier that uh, you need the Gemini, the big Gemini, I think, to get this to fit the whole width of the die. But I used my Gemini, not my Gemini, my uh, Spellbinders Platinum 6 and got this through and just trimmed off the edges on the long side because um, they they went off of the edge for me on my on my plate. Now I vaguely remember Nicole mentioning that there might be another way to use that, but uh, she'll have to tell you about it because <laughs> I don't remember. But I did fine. I did fine with it this way. So okay, so I'm just gonna pull that up there like that, and I can flip this over. Put some more tape down here. Like this. Now there's another little issue that I want to help you solve with this as well. Because when you do your, your shaker, you don't want any of the bits to come off the side here. So it'd be great if you were to seal this section right here with a piece of tape. So grab that tape and put it down along the edge here. And that way no, none of those shaker bits are going to come off the onto the side there. And I'm just going to do the same thing. Let's peel that up and then we'll do the other side. Okay. Let's put that down. I'm just going to trim this off just a little bit right here. Okay, now here's where you don't want to pull this too tight because if you get it too tight, you're going to bend your card front, right? You just want it to be hang just a little bit loose there. And I don't want any, you can trim back anything that's kind of sticking out there, but don't leave holes in your card or in your acetate, right? There we go. All right. Pop that there and there. And then flip this around, do the same thing on this side. A full front shaker. Is that what this is called? Full front shaker card. Okay, so I'm not going to pull that tight. I'm just going to let it hang loose just a little bit on the side there because we want a little bit of room for it to, for the shaker bits to be put in there. See that? Now it's nice and smooth. The front is just gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous and smooth. And now I can take my shaker bits, my sequin mix here. And this one is called Peter Cottontail, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. A2 Full Front Shaker Die. Thank you very much. Yeah, you don't have to buy any uh, special acetate for this. You can use the packaging from stamps if you want. 
I have acetate. Uh, I have a whole book of acetate that I like, that I use, but you don't have to do that. How many of these are you actually going to make? Um, are you going to mass produce these? If you're going to mass produce them, you're going to need to buy some acetate. But if not, just use the acetate that you have on hand from your stamps. So you just pour that into the front like that. Super fun to do and to use your sequin mix up. Wonderful. So I'm going to have to have another uh, another compact of this this one because it's just a beautiful mix. Absolutely beautiful. When I finish this, I'm going to pull out one of one of my uh, sequin um, holders, storages, storage holders, whatever they're called. I can't even talk. I feel like sometimes I don't even speak the language. <laughs> okay, there we go. Look how pretty. Now, the trick is not to uh, pull that too tight. You don't want it too tight. You just want to bend it over like that. And then you've got a nice full front shaker. And the things move real nice. Isn't that nice? Okay, let me let me just uh, show you what my sequins look like when they're in my storage. <laughs> my storage. It's I call it my storage because they're mine now. But uh, these don't roll around in my Alex drawers now, and they stay put, and I can just reach in and grab them. So uh, those are also sold on Picket Fence Studios website. You should grab some of those to put all your sequin mixes in. <laughs> Okay, now for the for the end here, what we want to do is just put it on a card base on the front of a card base. And if you made the uh, card a two size, you don't have to worry about that matching, right? But I do. I don't want any of this sticking out at all from the from the front of my card. I don't want to see the card base. So I will just trim it down a hair, just a hair, on all on a one side and then the top. Only because I want to make sure none of that white is peeking out from the side there. And now my card front is definitely just a hair bigger than my card front. What do you guys think? Do you like that? Let's do let's do some uh, score tape for this. We'll do score tape instead of. Now I don't have a tape runner, so I would I would just do that probably if I had tape runner, but I don't like to use tape runner, so I don't keep one. Plus, the only one I did have was pink. And I just, I'm not much into pink tools or fuchsia tools. I think that tools and crafting stuff should be kind of neutral colored. This makes me not even want to buy it if it's too pink. Thank you guys. I'm glad you like it. I think it's a fun project. Easy to do. I didn't go too crazy with mixing colors. I think the, um, what did I just do? I pulled up my, my, uh, score tape. I think the thing that took the longest was putting my tape down. <laughs> That's probably why I need a, a tape runner, even if it's pink. <laughs> okay, now to put this in the corner, all you do is just uh, line up the edges 
like that. Not like that, but like this. Make sure there's no white showing. No white showing there, there, there. There we go. Now it's done. <laughs> what a fun card, guys. Don't you love that pink sky? Look at all those shaker bits. Who would not just be have their socks knocked off with a full front shaker card like this? Now you want the die, right, Kathy? Well, that's what we're here for. We're here to help you see how to use the stuff so that way you can play with it, all right? So thank you all for joining me tonight. I hope you enjoyed this card project as much as I did making it. And I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful evening. If you have any questions, I can spend a few more minutes here chatting. No worries at all. I can put this aside and do this right here. There we go. <laughs> you guys have any questions? Right, Nicole did all the work for me. The die anyway. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Kathy. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Karen and Nicole. Thank you very much. The background ink is do, -si -do from Catherine Pooler. And I used Picket Fence Black Hybrid ink for the um, bunny and the grass and eggs. I used Wow embossing powder or, or ink for the embossing and pitch black cardstock for that and the card base is accent white it's a very inexpensive wonderful thick card love it all right show us the new phone okay nicole very good idea so the new foam so thick pretty where is it at? I have a big black roll of it right here. This is the new foam. It comes in a big roller. I think you can buy them in sheets already pre-cut. Boy, that's noisy. You can get them in black or you can get it in white. And you can see I've been using the white one a lot already. <laughs> I've got... Look how much, I haven't used the black one yet, but look how much of it's already gone from the, the white. So let me pull that, pull out a little bit of this so you can see it. Oops. There we go. Look at that. It's uh, four and a quarter inches wide. So if you want, you can just... Uh, Put this right on the back of your card just as it is just slice off the length of it that you want i like to use now here's a tip for cutting it it is very 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 sticky on this side so if you want to cut it you can you could cut it with a pair of nice heavy duty shears but well i'm left-handed so i hope this is helpful to you but the the backing is on top when i cut it and it cuts better if you flip it over this way and try to cut, you're going to get your, your scissors stuck easier. So um, do that. Or you could put it in a guillotine trimmer and put the sticky side up and do it that way. That's a different way. To do it. But it is a wonderful, wonderful thick. And it's so sturdy. What I love about this, too, is I often forget to stamp my sentiment until I'm already done i've already popped something up on the front of a card base and i'm like oh man now if i try to stamp it it's going to be uneven if i use foam tape like strips it's not going to catch all of the ink when i press it down and so with this though if i forget to do that and i've already done it a few times um, i'm able to stamp right on top of this and it's so uh, even and sturdy that um 
that I can stamp right over it once my cardstock is on there. So I do like that about it. I do like that about it. All right, guys. Thank you very much. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Take care and get your craft on, guys. <laughs> Good night.